Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, guys, wherever you are on this beautiful world. Whenever you're watching this video, welcome to the Bitcoin family channel. For the newcomers, my name is Didi. In today's video, I have five amazing Bitcoin jars, must-see Bitcoin jars. I have a trading tip. I have a travel tip. Of course, some live advice and the news, because something really cool is happening to the traditional financial world, connecting it to Bitcoin, but I don't really know if I like it. But I'm going to discuss it at the end in this video, guys. Let's quickly jump into the charts to see what is happening to Bitcoin at the moment, because a lot of doubt, people are still waiting for that dip. 38K, 34K, 31K, will we go and dip that far? Or will we go and visit 48K and 61K? Let's check the charts, bam. The first chart for today, guys, is this beautiful the first chart for today is this four hour chart on Bitcoin, guys. We can see that red candle closing almost down below the yellow step line. It will take another one hour and 47 minutes for this candle to close. If that candle closes down below the yellow step line, it could be a fine moment indeed to take that short, guys. And if you look at the other indicators, we can see over here, yeah, the white line starts to curl down lows, the blue line already crossed, and we can even see some yellow appearing here on the bottom and the red line is on top. So if that candle closes down below the yellow stepping line, that's a valid short. And the short will take you, of course, here to the 41,900 or to the bottom of the Bollinger Band 41,500 level. So yes, it is a small profit, but it still is a beautiful profit, guys. Um, if we close this candle above the yellow stepping line, then we will have two red candles with large wicks to the downside. And that could lead to another pump all the way up above to 48k, guys. So be aware of this four hour movement on the chart. Now let's zoom out and look at some more interesting charts. The first one is this one. The Bitcoin price 2012 to 2020 versus 2016 to 2024. Yes, both an eight year cycle. We can see where we are now in that above orange line. And if you compare it to the line below it, you can see that there was that COVID dip. But after that, we went higher again. For me, we need to go around 50K towards that halving. That halving is at the end of that line over there, guys. We can so see also on the bottom of the chart, the rolling four-year compound annual growth rate, CIGR. So we can see that on average, we made 235% completely to the left, uh, all the way up to dips of 52%, even 24% in the dip of 2017-18. And that we are now again around 46% CIGR. It means that an investor has a return of investment of 46% each year he is invested in Bitcoin. That is a shitload of profit. That's a profit that normal other assets can't give you. Really interesting chart. Then we have this one, the Bitcoin price on this date. Uh, the Bitcoin price is 42K. Last year, it was 23K on this date. The year before, 38K. The year before that, 33K, 9K, 3K, 12K. You can see on this date, again, a new all-time high when it comes to the price on the 28th of January, 2024. It was the highest price ever for Bitcoin on the 28th of January in 2024, guys. Now, then we have this chart, but this chart will take me a long time to explain, so I will keep it short and you need to pause the video if you want to analyze it for yourself. But on this chart, you can see the illiquid and the long-term hodler supply divergence. So you can see that the long-term hodlers and the illiquid supply is now a little bit decreasing and the short-term hodlers and the liquid supply on the exchanges is increasing. So the gap that was created is slowly being closed. Now, I want you to comment down below the video what that exactly means. So the long-term hodlers and the long-term illiquid supply is going down a little bit, and the short-term hodlers and the liquid supply is going up a little bit. What does this mean for the market? Let me know down below in the comments. I will give the answer, of course, in tomorrow's video. Then we have the realized cap drawdowns. We can see that the realized cap drawdowns are completely different, of course, than the normal price drawdowns. Um, we can see completely to the left that the max drawdown was 24.1%. The recovery rate after that was 0.22% a day. Then the max drawdown after that in 2016 was 14.1% and the recovery rate was 0.09% a day. Then the next drawdown after 2017 peak was 16.5%, and the recovery rate was 0.70% a day. And then the last bull market, we went up, and then the bear market, the max drawdown was 19%, and the recovery rate is 0.05% a day. So you can see that even when we look at the realized price, that we are copying every cycle's move again and again and again. Yeah, there's a few percent difference, but still, 
we are recovering in the same pace, in the same way. And we are in that recovery mode now. And there will be another bull market again. And from the bull market, there will be another max drawdown again. It's so simple if you just really try to understand the four-year cycle. Take one hour today to analyze all these zoomed out charts you can find of Plan B, of Glassnode, of uh, Wubble, all of these four-year cycle charts. Take one hour to analyze exactly what happened every and each cycle and you will understand why it is now in a perfect moment to accumulate a shitload of Bitcoin before the halving. And we have this chart of Plan B. Plan B had a very technical discussion with another uh, Twitter person about the difference between his stock to flow model and another uh, growth model. And Plan B today stated his answer. Just go check that tweet. It's very interesting if you want to be educated about the stock to flow model and that other model. But also this tweet today was really interesting because Plan B tweeted, if we would outperform the same way that we outperform in 2012 to 2016 um, bull market, which would be 30% above the prediction, we could end up at a really crazy price. Because if you look at this table, you can see that some periods we are underperforming. So the stock to flow model said, hey, we will go to 0.4 cents. We only went to 0.2 cents. Or where the stock to flow model said, hey, we will go to $7. Yes, we went to $7. And when we said we, so we will go to $263, hey, we went to $358, we outperformed. That was the 2012 to 16 bull market. Now then the next one was, hey, the stock to flow model said $5,461. It was $5,895. So we outperformed it with about 8%. Now the 2020 to 2024, the stock to flow model said $63,300. The Bitcoin price was an average of 31K. So we underperformed with 50%. Now look to the charts, what happened the year that we underperformed at 50%, that was 2010-11. And 11-12, we broke even, 0%. And then 2012-16, to 16, it was 30% outperforming. So what if now after that 50%, we would get one year of uh, sideways 0%, and then 2024-28, outperforming again, that for example, 30%, then we would end up higher than 532,000. If we would underperform, like normally, minus 50%, then 532,400, 50% less than that, is still 260K per Bitcoin. So even if we underperform, I will be happy with that price. If we overperform, of course, I will be even more happy with the price because that would mean we would go higher than 500K. It is a very interesting discussion. Go and follow it on X uh, in Plan B's account. I think it's the latest tweet. So it's a really interesting discussion, guys. And now, my opinion again, if we will break this red area on the chart, just like in the previous cycles, so we're talking about that 48K level. If we will break that level, we will go to 60K. We will go into this massive bull market once again, guys. And yes, we can have pullbacks and dips, but those dips are for buying. Always buy the dip. And if you are looking at this table, you will understand even more why. Because at the moment, the volume created by Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, GBTC, the one that was dumping all the time, the volume was now 153 million on the 30th of uh, January. 153 million. Now look at the volume of IBIT and FBTC, the Fidelity Wise Origin Bitcoin Fund and the ICS of Bitcoin Trust. That was a combined 196 plus 168. So that's almost 400 million in volume, while Grayscale only has 150 million volume. The first seven, eight, nine days, Grayscale had 600 million of volume because of all the dumping. Now the dumping is over. Now BlackRock's and Fidelity's are taking over the volume. So this means new liquidity is coming to the market. Instead of dumping, we only see a few hundred million dollar worth of Bitcoin added to the market every and each day. This can only lead to a supply shock. If it will continue like this, 100 million every day, 200 million every day, 500 million every day, it will lead to a supply shock because there is not that amount of Bitcoins available. The price will increase. This is simple mathematics. Supply and demand. If there is not enough supply to meet the demand, the price will go up. 
I hope you really enjoyed the charts, guys. The charts are very simple and just telling you exactly what it is. TA never lies. The charts never lie, guys. A lot of news lies, a lot of people lies, but charts do not lie. We can see that we are exactly a certain amount of days before that halving. And after that halving, we have always gone up, guys. We have seen it now a couple of times on those charts. Every time, again and again and again, we went up after that halving. A very important moment. I will turn the camera a little bit because, yes, you haven't seen booty for a long time and there were two beautiful booties, but the charts are simple. We will have a halving in April 2024. We will go up from that halving sky high, maybe even visiting over 100K per Bitcoin in 2025. I will repeat it once again. I believe that this year, 2024, we will break the previous all-time high of 70K. And in 2025, we will see a bull market up above 100K. So there you have it. That is my price target for the next 12 months, guys. Now let's quickly jump into the trading tip. The trading tip for today, guys, is about the paid network token, paid. You all know I was their advisor. I was there from the beginning when paid was invented in Koh Phangan, together with Carl Chassi and some other crypto OGs. And the tokens that I received for doing so, I have been holding since. And yes, you all know paid went to $6 last cycle. The top of the paid token was $6. I didn't sell any of them. I kept all of them. And we dropped back all the way to two and three cents. And now we went back to 20 cents and even to 40 cents. And I believe pay token in the future will be a couple of dollars again, guys. And why? Because they just launched a new staking tokenomics. And the staking on Ignition version two now is awesome. So yesterday, I added a huge part of my pay tokens back to that staking mechanism. I started to stake the pay token. And for that, I directly received the S paid token. And that S paid token is exactly why I want to stake paid now, because that is giving me not only the opportunity to early investments, it also is giving me staking rewards, community rewards, even the ability to play games on my mobile now if I hold a staked pay tokens. So there's a lot of advantages now for staking your pay tokens. And we are all in the bull market, so the pay token is not gonna crash to zero. So why just not stake the pay tokens that you hold till the bull market top again, maybe a couple of bucks per paid. And of course you can uh, withdraw your staked tokens again back to pay tokens and sell them. But then at least during that period of that bull market, you will be able to make use of all the advantages that you get when you stake that paid token. And that's a trading tip for today. Today I'm talking about the paid token, but you can stake in many platforms. And staking in a bull market, in my honest opinion, is always okay. Because a token will increase in value, so you will be able to sell your tokens on the end again um, for some profit. But during that staking period, you will be able to make a use of all the advantages that that platform offers you. And pay token, guys, is going to surprise you all again in this bull market. It surprised you in the last bull market. But this bull market, I saw a video yesterday, this is going to drive you crazy. Because the first collaboration where they have for their platform, for their staking mechanism, for you to have an investment opportunity, an early investment opportunity, is with Gunzilla. And that is not the smallest project to start off with. Just look at the tokenomics, just watch the video that Carl Chasse launched, and you will understand the complete tokenomics of that staking protocol, and you will understand that there will be a shitload of paid buybacks, so they are creating an automatic demand for the pay token because of their tokenomic model. So the more people start to stake and use the pay token, the more tokens will be burned or bought back, which of course will lead to an increase of the token price. This is a very interesting concept, but you really need to take a look at it before it will take off. So my trading tip for today is make use of all those staking platforms in the bull market, not in the bear market, and paid network is now my favorite number one. Now let's jump into the next part. I got up a little bit later today, so it's already 8.30 and that the sun is really high, so the sun is really influencing the image. Maybe I should walk a little bit earlier again, guys, but uh, today's travel tip is always pack a deck of cards and a pair of dice. 
because it's always nice to play a game in the evenings when you're bored or whatever, guys. We always play card games uh, and, of course, dice games. The dice games that Romain mostly plays is like rolling them um, to Thousand or Yahtzee or all of the games. I don't play too many games. I'm, at the moment, really occupied with working. I'm working a shitload at the moment. It's a bull market. So for me, it's now focusing you know, on, on analyzing projects, on investing in projects, on creating content and all that stuff, educational stuff, the VIP group. So for me, it's really busy times at the moment. Of course, I do party as well. Of course, I go for dinners and of course, I find this balance, but it's really hard work. But it's always nice that when I come home and the kids, all the men are playing these simple games, not sitting on their iPhone like this continuously, but also playing dice games or card games, because those games have interaction by human beings with each other. Instead of your iPhone, you're just scrolling and you're just playing with a digital person on the other side of the world without any interactions. I think it's very important for a family to always have these interaction games. Now, if you have a card game or Uno or whatever game it is, they will always give you a lot of laughter, a lot of uh, stress as well, because we in the family all don't want to lose. And of course, somebody needs to lose in these games. But even when you're alone, guys, you can play Pachance completely alone with cards. You don't need an iPhone to play Pachance. Yes, that's a new secret. You can play it with cards. That's how it was invented, with official deck of cards. So you can just put them there and just start to play Pachance with cards. Also fun instead of your iPhone, because that staring to your iPhone I don't think it's completely healthy to do, that, to do that more than like six hours a day. So the travel tip for today is pack a deck of cards and a couple of dice. Then. The question of one of the followers was, Didi, what is your opinion about El Salvador? So for, first of all, my opinion about El Salvador can't be based on the real truth because I never visited El Salvador. So I don't really know what kind of country it is. I do love that they made Bitcoin a legal tender. Of course, that's the most positive thing. El Salvador made Bitcoin a legal tender. I also love that they are using their volcanoes to mine Bitcoins. So those things I really like about El Salvador. I don't know the true meaning of the president and a lot of people are saying, but he's not good for the people and he is good for the people. A lot of people say, yeah, it's only 30% of the people in El Salvador that ever touched a Bitcoin, so it's not like completely integrated in their lives again. But I don't think that even matters. I think the president, Nayib Bukele, or however you pronounce it, did a really good job in promoting Bitcoin in South America. And he really showed South America what happened by integrating Bitcoin as a legal tender. Because of him doing that, the tourism increased tremendously. I think with almost 40% increase for the tourism. That is already very positive for all the local people because that means business, that means money, that means selling more melons or other, other kinds of fruits or other, other products. It also increased the stability of the country because they are now a Bitcoin-backed country, not gold-backed anymore, a Bitcoin-backed country. And Bitcoin has a limited supply of 21 million. So by now, all the Bitcoins that they accumulated are in profit. So he's doing well for his country and also for the people. So for me, it's not a discussion if it was good or bad. Um, I haven't visited it. What I see of pictures, the beaches and everything, yes, I don't like darkish beaches. For me, it's way more beautiful to have a white sand beach and palm trees. But I do love that El Zonta part of the beach where you can spend your Bitcoins because I think it's really important that we will be able to spend our Bitcoins. So my opinion about ourselves there is, of course, positive. I think they did a great job as a country to put Bitcoin again there in the spotlight. How it was done and if it was pushed onto the people, I don't really know all those details. Maybe you should ask that to the people that went there to make documentaries and all that stuff. But for me, whenever a country makes Bitcoin a legal tender, I think that is a very positive thing. I can't be negative about something like that, guys. So the last thing that I read is that you can become a citizen of El Salvador. But I think by now you need to invest 1 million US dollar. So a couple of years ago, that was 100,000 US dollars to get your El Salvadorian residency. I think that is now $1 million. I don't like that. I don't like that. If it, was, if it would be 100K, I would maybe even consider of doing it and buying an apartment or whatever it is for 100K to become an, uh, a resident in El Salvador. But $1 million, I think that's a little bit far-fetched to get your residency because there's way more cheaper options to get a residency and not pay tax on your Bitcoin. So I do think they need to 
change that whole system of $1 million back to the 100K what it used to be. Or maybe because you're a Bitcoin country to just one or two or three Bitcoins, not to 20 Bitcoins. But that's my honest opinion. That was the answer to the question. Let's now jump into the next part. Reminder to myself, please Didi, don't go walking at 8.30. Please go at 7.30. It is bloody hot. It's becoming warmer and warmer the more we um, come towards the halving. So April, May, June are the hottest months here in uh, Thailand. So yes, now already February is becoming really hot. So yeah, you can feel it in the morning. Today's news, guys, is huge. But I don't know if I really like it. But the news is that Visa card, Visa card, the official huge Visa card, is now making it possible in 145 countries for people to exit their cryptos directly into Visa. So for example, if you have some Ethereum tokens or any other token in your MetaMask, you will now be able to withdraw those tokens directly to your traditional finance Visa card and start to spend them. You don't need a centralized exchange anymore or a decentralized exchange, but you can directly withdraw your cryptos from a Web3 wallet like MetaMask into your Visa card. And that's going to be supported in 145 countries. And then, for example, I saw Portugal, etc., also on the list. But my question now is, do you really want that? Because your MetaMask is anonymous. You have all the privacy you need on your MetaMask. Nobody knows it's your MetaMask. All the tokens on the MetaMask are completely anonymous. So not traceable for anyone. Also not for the tax regimes. So the moment you withdraw those tokens from your MetaMask into a Visa card that's completely KYC, I believe they probably will put a step in between that you will agree by signing the transaction that they assign that wallet to your Visa card. So then Visa knows exactly that that wallet, that MetaMask wallet belongs to you. And Visa card is of course a traditional finance company. And they have been working with tax companies, governments, banks already for years. So for them to now create a database of which Visa card owner is owning which wallet is very simple. And I don't know if I like that. That is making it a little bit too transparent, if you ask me. For me, I have my MetaMask and some other Web3 wallets to keep my privacy. So I don't want Visa card to know that. And I think it's a little bit different when you have, for example, the Bybit account. Because Bybit is not like integrated in the traditional finance system yet. It's like a license in Singapore, Seychelles, and all those countries, you know, that don't want to communicate too much to those governments where you are registered. I feel a little bit more safe to have my cryptos in Bybit and use the Bybit debit card because that is not completely connected yet with that whole traditional finance system. And I'm really afraid that that whole traditional finance system is now doing all these steps, taking all these steps, just to get to know who you are. They want to know their customer, KYC. So they are finding out now these new possibilities of you being able to withdraw your cryptos into the Visa card directly, but they will know who you are. I don't like that. So I'm gonna search further for a new project that has maybe a completely decentralized debit card that nobody knows of that you own. So for example, with Bybit, you need to do KYC, so Bybit knows um, that it's you. But Bybit doesn't send your data all over the world to tell governments or to tell tax companies, hey, this is Didi, he has a Bybit account, he's using his uh, Bybit debit card, and he is spending 100K each month. And no, I'm not spending 100K each month. I don't even know, because I don't spend those amount of money. We still live a very simple life in Thailand and eat Thai food, like that's like 60 baht. That's like $1.50 per day per person. So sometimes we go out and eat luxury and it's like $20 in total for the whole group. And if we do it really luxury, yeah, then it's like $500 for the whole family. But then it was like a seven course dinner at a Michelin star restaurant or something like that, guys. But I just don't have the complete good feeling with that news. Of course, I love it that now the traditional finance world starts to integrate Bitcoin and you know that, that will mean a shitload of promotion for Bitcoin because Visa also has their PR campaigns and you will have their com and they will have their commercials telling you wow you can now exchange your crypto direct to your Visa card and spend them and of course for normal people like maybe less freedom minded people not like me like a little bit different like normal people that have a normal job have a normal like bank account and have a normal life 
for them it's perfect because they play around a little bit with some cryptos and if they make some profits they will withdraw those profits into their visa card and they will just spend them and for them it's not important that nobody knows how many cryptos they have for me and probably many other crypto people it's a little bit different we are in bitcoin because we love privacy we love to have a possibility of spending peer-to-peer -peer transactions without anybody being able to stop it. We love peer-to-peer -peer cash, just like you love the normal cash nowadays, because you can use your cash everywhere in the world just by spending it. Nobody will be able to stop it and nobody will be able to control it. With your bank account, that's different. With your Visa card, that's also different. But with Bitcoin, it's not different. It is digital, but it is unstoppable and unconfiscatable. So that's why we love Bitcoin. It's providing us of freedom, but also giving us the possibility to interact peer-to-peer -peer with other people all over the world. So I would not connect my MetaMask to a Visa card that is integrated in the normal traditional finance world, because I believe that they have an idea behind it. They just want to know their customer, and that's exactly what KYC means, and they want to get an insight of who has which cryptos. And just imagine, you think, ah, I'm sending a little bit Ethereum to that uh, Visa card, but by that they know which wallet is yours, and they will completely analyze that wallet. What came in? From which address did it come in? Which addresses are connected to this wallet? What other tokens does he hold? What is his complete capital? Is he paying enough tax on that capital, etc., etc. Oh shit, he bought those tokens at that moment, he sold the token at that moment, he made a shit out of profit. Did he pay profit tax? Some countries you need to pay profit tax on your trade profits. So the moment they know one of your wallets, they can retrieve a lot of data from there because the blockchain is completely transparent. So if, you, if they have one wallet, they can check all the wallets that have been connected to that, all the token movements, everything, and they can calculate exactly how much profit you made and how much tax you should pay, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it's huge news for adoption, but really bad news when it comes to privacy. So that's my opinion about that news. Let's jump into the next part. The last part of the video, guys, will, of course, be the live lesson, the inspirational part, whatever you call it, guys. Um, there's two kinds of people that will tell you that you can't make a difference in this world. The first person is the person that himself is afraid to make a difference in the world. And the second person is the person that is afraid that you will exceed in making a difference in the world. So you need to ignore those two people. Those two people need to be like completely gone in your mind. All those people that will tell you, ah, it's so difficult, you won't be able to do it. Um, I, I, I thought of trying it, but I was too afraid to do it. Ignore those people because they will tell you all the disadvantages while there is a shitload of advantages of trying to make a difference in the world. And all those people that will envy you because they are afraid that you succeed, they will also tell you, ah, don't do it because they are afraid that you might succeed in something they didn't succeed in. So you need to really ignore those two kinds of people. Just tell them, I'm not listening to you guys. I don't care what you have to say because you really don't understand anything about life because in life, everything is possible. And if I want to reach some goal or if I want to make a small difference, I will make that difference. And I think that's the most important mindset that you need to have. Believe in yourself. Don't listen to, to those people or other people that will tell you you won't be able to change it or to make a difference. Because it's not that difficult to make a difference in the world. It just sm starts with small things. You can even start to clean rivers in Bali or to clean rivers in Thailand, whatever you want to do. Clean up the beach, that's already making a difference. Do you want to tell me that is like impossible? And if you're talking about bigger things, setting up like foundations to support poor people or to build schools, different kind of schools, not like the brainwashing schools, but the schools that prepare children for the future instead of the past. So you want to take it bigger up, don't doubt, just do it. If you do not succeed, that's not a failure. That's just a stepping stone to the next level that you needed to take to understand what you need to do next to do succeed. Don't see all those life lessons and all those stepping stones that you need to take as a failure. They are just stepping stones to success. So all those people, all those naysayers, all those people that have negative attitudes towards you trying to make a difference in the world, 
Just give them the middle finger. Just tell them, fuck off. Fuck off. You don't do shit. You just complain. You just make negative comments so that I won't do what I want to do. I don't listen to you anymore. Please go visit another place in the world. Don't disrupt my energy. I will do what I need to do. I am going to make a difference in this world. That's how you should handle those two types of people. Now, that was everything for today, guys. I hope you really enjoyed today's video. If you did enjoy today's video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment. What do you think about the charts? What do you think about all the content, the tips, and everything else? Let me know down below. And if you want to buy Bitcoin or start trading, use the links down below my video. Buy Bit, of course, KYC, with shitload of bonuses, up to 30K. I'm gonna soon give an iPhone away and some other prizes. Uh, but there is also a non-KYC exchange down below with the link. It is called Levex non-KYC and you can do whatever you want over there as well. Also trade and also buy Bitcoin of course. Now that is the end. Thank you for watching. I wish you an amazing day and see you tomorrow again. Bam!